Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Dorchester's Revenge, The Return of Crinoline Head. It's the dull faced killer! Written and directed by Tommy Faircloth, starring Debbie Rashawn and Jason Vale, Dorchester's Revenge is a film about a serial killer who wears a doll face mask going around and killing innocent teens as they're trying to do a research project about his legend. So what do we like? I'm going to start off with the production value. The cinematography was great. They did a lot of focusing between different objects in a scene which is called rack focusing, which was amazing. Especially at the very beginning of the movie where we have the scene of Dorchester and his mother where we get the whole backstory. The way they shot that, it had that really old school feel to it. Sadly, there wasn't a lot of on-screen kills, but the way that the camera was placed and how the bodies were dragged out of the scene, they did a good job playing with the audience and giving those jump scares. Also, the characters, I think, <laughs> were pretty awesome. We have our asshole jocks, we've got our sluts, we've we have our reserved <laughs> girl, and we had a reserved guy who also was the funny guy. Yeah. Uh, James, that guy was probably the funniest character in the movie. Every single character was very stereotypical, and it kept you guessing as to which character was going to be the hero, or who was going to be, like, the final girl. I really enjoyed Dorchester. Like, his serial killing costume, he had, like, a porcelain doll face but it was cracked in half and he was just a big beefy dude yeah. and I did like that they had the little backstory at the beginning for those that maybe didn't see the first movie because this is a sequel to a film that Tommy did back in 96 which we hadn't seen but you didn't need it this is a good standalone film what I really liked about Dorchester though was kind of how his character was developed and presented he had a feel as though he was Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees in one it was by the lake he had mother issues the way he killed and the way he presented himself was exactly like how like Michael Myers did his in Halloween. Another huge highlight of this film was how they used comedy to kind of fill in all the duller moments. Her vag is like Mars. It's never been explored. Unlike yours. Well, the rover went on Mars. I also want to talk about Debbie Rashawn's character because she was easily the most entertaining person on screen this whole movie. Baby. You want some head? I can hook you up right now. And by hooking you up, what I'm saying is, I can give you a blowjob like you never had. Yeah, um, I got it. I, I've gotten your little innuendos thus far, thank you. As she was vulgar as she <laughs> usually is, just being some batshit crazy woman living in a trailer and trying to fuck all the kids. Now let's talk about our favorite kills. My favorite kill is Reggie's death. He's setting up Donna, splashing her with beer, having her swing at a pinata, and then we just see Dorchester sneak up from behind and he slits his throat. But then Dorchester ties him up with the rope while Donna's unaware of this blindfolded, hangs him from the tree, and then gives Donna the axe. And then she just starts swinging at him. All we see is blood being squirted on Donna, and she thinks that it's beer, but I wish that Dorchester didn't kill Reggie, just kind of gagged him, and then had Donna do the full kill. That right. would have made it even cooler. My favorite kill, it's a wacky one. So essentially Janet, the slut of the group, is a complete bitch this whole time and she had her period. Now we'll come back to why this is important. So Janet has to go to the washroom and she goes to Debbie Rashawn's place. Debbie Rashawn says, no, you're not using my washroom. Can you just <laughs> pop a squat? Janet's like, oh yeah, I can pop a squat and starts twerking for her. Debbie doesn't give a fuck about this. It says, get out of here. So Janet goes into the forest. Dorchester's knife just comes from behind a tree. She proceeds to pop a squat right onto a knife. This is brutal. And later on, she comes waddling into the tent, just covered in blood, and the guy she's with is just like, you're on your rag, so we're not fucking now. So brutal, and it all tied in together, and I just thought the pop and the squat thing was so original on a knife. That was yeah. fucking awesome. Okay, now, what didn't we like about this movie? I'm gonna kick this one off with Probably the most evident thing, it's not seeing the kills. I think it would have been a way better movie yeah. if we had seen some on-screen kills. Well, the cinematography was great. I think the audio was lacking a bit. It came down to where the mic was positioned when certain people were talking. It's most evident in the classroom. We couldn't even hear Professor Bonner tell the backstory. The mic was focused more on David's character and James's character in the front asking the questions. And just like two feet in front, you're hearing the entire plot, but you you can't hear it. I think the sound effects were okay, but too loud. The most confusing one was after Debbie Rashawn had sex with uh, Steve and she gets off of him. It's a really awkward sound. Woo! 
everything was just rushed with the characters and I felt if they took more time and spaced everything out it would have had a stronger impact with what they were trying to get across especially when you're trying to develop characters and change them and I think some of that comes down to the speed at which all of these kids died. We had basically just got to meet all of these characters, and then five minutes later, two of the developing characters died. The whole scene with like the three drag queens, they could have cut that like 20 minute scene out and filled that with the teens actually getting to the campground earlier and spacing the kills out. I completely agree. Well, I did like that yeah, scene. The, dra the, the drag, drag queens were, were funny. Yeah, they were really funny. Good. Send a car when you get there, honey. And some chicken nuggets. Ooh, and a cocktail with make, a straw. Make that too. Keep the drag queens, but give us more. Use your time wisely. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I thought this movie was actually pretty solid. It was well shot, it was well edited. I thought the characters were all very solid. I just wish we saw a little bit more development and I wish they lasted a lot longer than they did. And when they did die, I wish I saw them get killed on screen. Uh, we had an excellent killer overall, it was a really, really funny movie, and everything was well done. So I'm gonna give this film 3.2 ratchet hats out of five. For not seeing the first film, I found this sequel to be very entertaining. It was funny, and it had a really good story to it. Dorchester as a killer looked awesome, and he played the part great. I found all the teens in this movie, though it was their, most of them their first time acting, they did a really good job. We didn't get to see a lot of kills, and that was really disappointing for me. So that being said, I'm gonna give it three drag calls out of five. Okay. As always, thanks for watching. Like this video and comment below with your favorite doll face killer movie. To stay up to date with everything Bloodbath and Beyond, make sure you subscribe.